Those out there who thought that the Bruce Lee portrayal in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was insulting have clearly never seen this movie. Jamie, yep. let's go watch No Retreat, No Surrender. Welcome to another episode of Good Times, Great Movies. It is here where myself, Jamie Lorello, and my podcast partner over there, DP McCambridge, talk with you about a movie from the 1980s. Mm -hmm. That's why it's a good time and it's a great movie. Well, it's not always a great movie, but some movies are better than others. I agree. And sometimes <sighs> those movies, they, they, they kind of surprise you. Normally, how I good think they, they are surprise because us. they're so bad. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I think we've talked about some movies that are legitimately good that we thought were good, but certainly some of the sure. really bad ones can surprise us by being just what we needed or just what we were looking for in our lives, it, not just in our podcast. Right. Let's just be real. If I can be real. <laughs> I'll say that there's sometimes when this podcast will show me a movie that changes. Mm -hmm. It changes. It's a game changer for me. Okay, and just so changer. just so our listeners know, Jamie did get real. She <laughs> turned her chair around backwards and turned her baseball cap around <laughs> backwards, and now she's rapping with us. Because it's real. Because it's, it's real. totally real. So before we get into this real movie, I do want to remind both our patrons and our non-patrons that our Halloween. Patreon episode will be out on October 1st, right. and it is the movie Happy Birthday to Me, and we'll announce our first regular horror episode at the end of this show. That's the only announcement So that's exciting. I have, that's an exciting I, announcement, though. Why are we front-loading this with any announcements? Because I just want to talk about no retreat, no surrender until, let's say, the cows come home. That's a long time. Okay. All right. Well, the cows do come home at some point, I guess. No, I want to talk about this movie until, I don't know. What is his name? What's, wait. Until. Is he even from, where, where well, is. Well, Jean-Claude Van Damme um, is not from Russia, but in this movie he is. Because <laughs> he's Ivan Krushinsky. Yep. Did you hear his last name? Oh, of course I did, because he crushes people, I guess. I, yeah, it's, Exactly. It, it's crazy because they don't. He doesn't talk much. He doesn't talk mm -hmm. until the end of this movie. Well, and you don't realize. Like I didn't. I honestly didn't. I didn't see this movie before this. And uh, when I looked it up, and then I see he's like all over the posters, and he's like top. But like he's like the big sell for this movie. He's in literally like fifteen minutes of it. Yep. And when we first meet him, we don't realize the powerful player he is going to end up being at the end, right? Because he just seems like one of these... Yeah, I just thought he was going to be there the whole time, and then he just like drops out of the movie. We see those mobsters throughout, and he's never with them, ever. No, there's the a beginning. whole other time that they do a shakedown, and I was like, oh, I guess they... I think that's why I wrote my notes. Where's Jean-Claude? I will say, so I must confess... Yeah, of course. ...that I've discovered, and I think I was leaning on this discovery during Bloodsport. Sure. But it's full-blown now. I've got a crush on Jean-Claude Van Damme, and I'm not afraid to say it I don't here think on this you podcast should be afraid with to all say of you. It. I think you're late to the party. I think that's <laughs> the, the problem with this. <laughs> and how could, I don't want to say how could you not, but come on, he's two for two on this podcast. Like two times he's made appearances in two just great, I will say great movies. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to go on record as saying that both of these two movies exceeded my expectations. And there was an, a moment yes. where I was bored with either of these. I and I don't think I, I mean, will have he's to completely not, agree. Yeah. I mean, he's not doing the heavy lifting yeah, in this but, movie. The writer and director are. Yes. 
when he is in it, I'm transfixed. Yes. Like, and when he literally, when he first appeared with that white suit that he has, oh my God. I went, oh my. <laughs> I said it. I gasped while I was watching the movie. <laughs> I'm sure. And then I was missing him throughout. <laughs> I was like, where is So you weren't the just saying, Dom? oh my, at every scene like I was? Like about th- 30 oh, no, seconds into say- every scene, I was like, oh my, what is happening now? <laughs> oh my, we're no, at a club? No, those were oh my's for other reasons. This was a like, take my breath away, okay, oh my. Okay, all right, okay. You know? So it wasn't, the a, other times it wasn't it was a, more- oh my, he's dressed like Michael Jackson. Oh my, <laughs> they're dressed like Michael Jackson. Oh my, what's oh he my. doing with that light bulb? <laughs> yeah, okay, with the light bulb. It's part of the routine. It is. Oh my, why are we having a burger party? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> burger party. Why is he having a burger party? And why does this creep have so many friends? Why are these people friends with I him? I know. He's why do they like him so much? Because he buys them food. He announces that he's going to buy them all food. And they're like, all right, we're hungry teenagers. Yeah. We'll Stick take with it. me. You'll never go hungry. What? They all have homes, I'm sure. Families that How? probably feed them. Oh, my. Why is the chubby kid in the karate class? Oh, my. Great question. And is he related to the guy at the bar? Because I feel like they, yes. they, they there has they're to kin. be. There was they're never kin. a scene where yeah. it was like, oh, this is my older brother. Like, I was reminded of Billy Madison when they were always like, oh, Doyle rules. Like, I was like, yes. why are and these two part not of the related? Doyle clan? Yeah. But we never yeah. see any relationship between those two characters. Mm-mm. This is such a weird movie. <laughs> it's so weird, but it's so mm-hmm. Amazing. And I, I think oh. this takes me back a little bit to when when we were done watching Mac and Me, and it wasn't uh-huh. as crazy as I thought it would be. I remember saying something like, I like movies that are so bad because you can see like the director has his hands all over this. Like, whoever made this movie, this is his vision, and it is a mess, <laughs> and it's wonderful. But they let him do it. Yes. They said, you know what? Let's and and I guarantee you we are not the only enthusiasts oh, of sure. this film. No, 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 no. I'm I. This is a film that I had heard about for a very long time. Like I had heard because it was Jean Claude Van Damme's first movie, sure. and of course, then later I heard how bad it was. Like so bad it's good, but I never watched. Never it. thought never, to indulge. Never yeah. thought to indulge, and it was. <laughs> Kind of difficult to find, too. I mean, you have to get it on YouTube, which is... It's a YouTuber. Yeah. I mean, it's just, just not difficult. Buy it legit wasn't easy. Like, I went on... Oh, like, yeah. I told well, you, I went on Amazon. I was like, oh, it's just the Mystery Science Theater guys making fun of it. I can't watch this or else I'm going to steal no. all their jokes. <laughs> so, anyway, the um, director of this is a guy named Corey Yun, which he made a ton of... Um, Chinese films, but I don't, have you ever seen the movie, the transporter with mm-hmm. Jason Statham? Mm-hmm. I was nope. shocked that this guy directed it. Cause it is a, it's not a great movie, but it's well-made. And I think it's like the movie that launched Jason Statham as an action star, like oh. a household name action star. And now he's in all those fast and furious movies and, and stuff like that. Um, the cast list, so many people in this movie it was their first movie, of course. Yeah. For some people, like uh, the girl who played Kelly, it was her first and last movie. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And the guy who played Bruce Lee's ghost, he had oh, yeah. he had a very illustrious career. This was his last movie. Ooh. Like, he was like, I'm oh. done. <laughs> so, yeah, it's... Well. It, yeah, but for a lot of them, it was their first, and then they kind of petered out after this. Separate well, Chocolate this is Daniel. all that the kid Jason is known for, right? Like in his, I mean, he still acts. I see, saw he's in some other movies, I guess, even uh, recently. He was in, but he this was in is a couple like, of soaps for a long time. Oh yeah, yeah, I could see that. Oh, of course, I could yeah. see that. Yeah, you know, he's a good-looking um, kid, and you know, if he can memorize lines, he could probably get into a soap. Do you see those dramatic stares he gave and the shouts with the father? Are you kidding me? Why was the father? Okay. All right. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's Let's get get into into this movie. No Retreat, No Surrender, 1986, Mm -hmm. right? So we're into... Did did you think that the movie was frozen at the beginning? How it just hangs on the front of this dojo? Like, I thought YouTube froze up on me and I was like, oh, 
man, I can't believe this. Like, it was just a static <laughs> shot of the outside of this dojo for a very long time. For awkwardly long. For yes. awkwardly long. You just have to almost laugh at, at well, they didn't, yeah, the way. They, I mean, they didn't have money for microphones uh, that mm-hmm. were decent. Uh, they didn't have money for actors. I don't know if they paid mm-hmm. someone to write this movie. I'm not really sure where the money was spent, but I just don't feel like they had any. They did. I love it because they, they allegedly moved to Seattle. But it's clearly, I lived in L.A. for 15, it's clearly always some part of L.A., Anaheim, San Pedro. It's never, except, I guess, obviously, when they're at um, uh, uh, Bruce Lee's grave, because that really is in Seattle. Yeah, they 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 must have filmed that on location. An (laughs) afternoon, yes. Yeah, but everything else takes place. Like, when they move... Go ahead. No, no, I'm just saying it's a very dry and sunny Seattle. Like it's very, yeah, it's yes. very bright. Yes. It's sunny all the time. It's never raining. Sometimes there are puddles. Like they had used a hose beforehand to make it look like it had just <laughs> rained. But it's amazing, and I like how they show the space needle so prominently, pan down, and then write Seattle. Just so you know. <laughs> Well, but before before they're in Seattle, we get an awkward long pause on this dojo because inside the dojo is an intense karate class with an instructor that looks way too young to be Jason's dad, who he is. But he looks way too young, doesn't he? Looks, he? he looks way too young. Also, this class, and I know nothing about karate. This class Do consists... Do you not? I w- I'm no, not no. surprised. Yes, <laughs> Surprise, surprise. I don't know how to punch people. This class is comprised of like people between the ages of 12. And I saw a man who was balding and had a giant mustache as part of this class. He (laughs) must have been in his early 40s. It is crazy, but maybe you can do that. Maybe if you're all at the same skill level, it doesn't matter how old or young you are. Yeah, you mix groups. But why is this? And are we supposed to know this kid is this teacher's son at first? Because I no, did not, I didn't I d- realize okay. it. Even when they moved, I was like, "Did he move the whole team with him?" <laughs> I was like, "Does everyone in this class have to move now?" <laughs> yeah, I didn't think it was. Okay. I didn't realize because <laughs> I saw like the dojo was like boarded up, and I saw the kid go by in a car, and I was like, "Why did he have to leave?" <laughs> That's what I thought, too. It was like, he tells parents, the one dojo in L.A. shut down. We have to move, Mom and Dad. I love the same thing. It's crazy. So, because, because again, they don't look like they're the same age. So, so there's this class, or that he could be the father. There's this class that's happening. Yeah. It's an intense class. Jason does kind of take down some guy and who I thought was just the instructor for no reason. Like, because he just feels like he should, I guess. And his instructor is like, Oh, don't do that anymore. That kid right is a bloody nose. This is terrible. It's not as bad as he gets beat up later, but we'll get there. His shirt's all ripped. All right. So all of a sudden outside the uh, dojo pulls up a Rolls Royce. Oh, of course. And, that's when Fad Dom shows up in his white suit. I have so many but, questions about this mafia and what they're trying they? to do. What are they trying to do? <laughs> they're the New York Karate Club? I don't know. Who are they? They're just the New York mob. It's just the And they're mob. coming to take over dojos. Though. Yes. That's specifically what they're doing. Is they come in. And <laughs> that is a very specific <laughs> thing, especially to travel across the country. To to, yeah. to take this one, and mm-hmm. why are Without, they taking it? What I is, don't know. <laughs> I would figure like like waste management makes sense. Like, why would you want this as a front for money laundering? I don't. 
You would figure the mom would be like, let's not do something so related with children. Like, maybe let's leave children out of our business model. I don't know. I don't know if they are the mob for... Because the, now he... Hey, the one guy comes in, he's kind of like the wise guy, right? Mm-hmm. But then he's got these two bodyguards that are obviously... Well, one of them is Jean-Claude. But they are karate experts, right. if you will. Does he just... I thought First, I thought he was coming to recruit the teacher, like to be one of his like yeah bodyguard to be a heavy henchmen. to be a tough yeah, yeah sure. exactly that would make that's so what much I thought more was sense. happening because because they come in and he's like have you thought about my offer and the guy's yeah. like it's a no deal you'll never have my says, dojo and I'm like what what's I happening love it. here he says karate is not to be used aggressively. But I have no choice, <laughs> he says that to him, before he decides to kick their ass because they're being so pushy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then a karate fight busts out. Oh, like a, a, karate guy, a karate fight between the dojo teacher and who and a guy who looks like Al Pacino's stunt double. Yeah, I don't know who <laughs> that guy is with the facial hair. It's yeah. great because he's about to... I have so many questions. Like the end of this movie... When the guy from New York's like, hey, my three best fighters, you guys ready to go? And then he's like, you know what? Forget this. Just the Russian. Yeah. What? These guys were training for this, I assume. They were so amped up. Well, that's what we didn't get to see any of that. We don't know why that. Fu- we don't. The fact that a fight like that happens at the end of this movie comes out of nowhere. It's literally the last 10 minutes of the movie <laughs> because there's no like. Like, you know, a Karate Kid, they're building to this tournament, to this fight. This is what we're doing. Even in blood sport, that's what they're there for is that whole thing. All we... Okay. Okay. So... We watched Jason so, train for a fight that he did not know was coming, which is we, the we, weirdest well, no. thing. Well, Is he training or is he... Well, is it a fight with the chubby kid? Is that who he's training to fight with? <laughs> it's just... To, it's for his mind. It's for him to connect to his chi. As his I guess, but like you him. said, like there's a reason Daniel's son or whoever the kid's name is from Karate Kid, like there's a reason. There's there's a tournament. There's a reason. Yeah. He is training for unknown reasons, but luckily there's this big fight at the end of the movie. It's that just he gets everything to prove works out in. so perfectly in the dumbest of ways. That's why it's so spectacular. So these guys, there's a karate fight. It's lovely because Von Dom gets to do these slow motion jumps and it's like this crazy. I could see where. Yeah, it's he, he's wearing a white suit and he's mm-hmm. just kind of standing there watching the Al Pacino guy fight. And the Al Pacino oh, guy right. kind of loses and crouches down and Van Dam runs and jumps off of him. He like steps <laughs> oh, on yeah. him just to kick the teacher in the face, which is amazing. <laughs> And then the kid, who we don't realize is his son, kind of goes in to like, like, what are they doing to the the teacher, the sensei? But now the teacher, they break his leg. He's on the <laughs> ground screaming, kind of like a sissy girl. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I don't know how this guy who teaches karate near the end of this movie really gets manhandled by a couple chubby guys. <laughs> Oh, yeah, when he's in the parking lot. And I love how yeah. every time we're at the bar, they have to show this establishing shot of the outside of the bar. Yeah. Even when Jason's like, I'll go get down from the bar. It's shot like... of the bar. <laughs> so they, they rough them up. They rough the teacher up, right? They leave. And the next scene is another one of my favorites. Well, hold on. Can Wait, we just go ahead? There. Oh, there are just certain parts of this movie that I loved because we talked about the editing earlier. Yeah. But when his dad's lying on the ground, writhing in pain, and oh, he yeah. says to his son, he goes, fighting them is not the answer. And his oh, son yeah. goes, then what is the answer? <laughs> Smash cut to them driving away. It is so oh, abrupt yeah. a shift. that Again, it's the, one, it's the first time in this movie that I went, what's happening? Where <laughs> are we? Who are these people? What is yeah. their relationship? Oh, we just put newspaper in the windows and I guess abandoned his yeah. business? Well, no, not yet. Before he decides to abandon the business, he okay. is in the hospital. Um, oh, oh and- I forgot about this. <laughs> This is what I was convinced it was this guy's movie. I was like, oh, okay, he's the main player of this film. I can't wait to find out. So he is, he gets to go to Cedar Sinai and he's in his hospital bed, which looks like a 19, like he's in this little <laughs> tin hot or 
this little hospital bed. Next to him is a giant bowl of apples. Yep. Um, <laughs> did you notice that? Yeah. And some medicine. Yeah. It's like, yeah, and you're right. It looks like he got back from the Korean War. Yeah. This does not look like a modern hospital <laughs> no, at all. No, no. And all of a sudden, he's sitting in bed, and he has an inner monologue that we get to hear. <laughs> we hear the That's whole thing. Kind it's of like amazing. Asking himself questions. Yeah. It's like this is crazy. And, the actor, and he's doing weird facial yeah. expressions. <laughs> the actor is sitting up in this cheesy hospital bed with his bowl of fruit next to him, and he's like <laughs> making these faces, like he's really pondering these thoughts that we get to hear. And it's basically like, I think I gotta move. That's the answer. Is I have to move? And I was like, yeah. does he mean move his leg? <laughs> Like, get back into, like, the karate? Or does he mean, like... Right. I thought it was going to be this guy's journey through, like, <laughs> severe We're rehabilitation yeah. or something. Just so maybe at the end of the movie he <sighs> walks again. I didn't know. And I, like, I did not know that Snotnose Kid, who beat up a, a classmate for no reason, was going to be the hero that we were going to yeah. follow in this movie. I didn't know that's where we were going after the first eight minutes. Ooh. And still did not know they were related. Still at this point, no. did not know. Still it was his unaware. Son. No. Oh he's in God. the hospital. He decides he's got to move, not move the physical body. He's got, well, he's got to move himself and his family to Seattle. And like we said, yes. he moves to Seattle, but he really moves from Anaheim to San Pedro. He's still in LA. And it's very clear because when they're like, ah, Seattle, he, it's clearly a California home that they've moved into. Well, I was looking at all these homes and I was like, they're all very like Adobe type. Yeah. I was like, this is not happening in Seattle, right? And and his kid, so his kid jumps out of the car. I love the absentee mom in this movie too. How she's she was two great. Scenes. We see her twice. Yeah. They, she's never there for the, her son. Like, he's very lonely. Dad's very hard on him. <laughs> and <laughs> she's never there. They're having a knockdown, drag out, scream fight in that house. She is not there. Well, I'm assuming he can't work because of his broken leg. Well, he does what end do up mean? working, he's at, working the bar. at a bar. Well, yeah. yeah, but she's maybe earning the cash for, for the whole move and everything. They had to leave the dojo because of him, or the LA because of him and his. You know, those Shady. magenta pants she's wearing later are not cheap. I assume that those cost some money and she's got to be the one out there making it. There you go. You know, this kid is so happy, though, too. And and at first I was like, he is so they just picked up and left and he's jumping out of that car. He's like, come on, Dad, look at you. You can yeah. walk now. This he is so happy. And then yeah. it wasn't until later that I realized, oh, he just wants to see Bruce Lee's grave. Like he's just so oh, yeah, happy. He's they so moved happy they to picked Seattle. Seattle. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's bringing it all together for him. And I don't know how long a broken bone takes to heal. My daughter broke her leg and she was in a cast for a little while, but I love how this guy gets out of the car and he's still like his legs not here. It's like they moved the day he was discharged from the hospital. <laughs> like it's like no time has passed since that fight. They're there. His leg is still busted up. Immediately he must have put newspapers in those windows and just He knew left. what he had to do. He knew what he had to do. Get out of Dodge. Right. He did talk and to he himself. Did. Yeah, he did have that, that little self talk. So like you said, he, Jason, feels right at home in his new mm -hmm. home. He's supposed to help everybody unpack, but instead he goes to his garage. He's ready to set up his little workout area, and he meets his new bestie, oh, RJ. You mean, you mean a, a giant racial stereotype shows up? Well, who rides up on his bike that has a little stereo attached. Oh, mm -hmm. radio bike. He later, he's on a skateboard. He's never on the same thing again. Oh, no, he no. does on the bike again it, it, later. In, during the training sessions, right. They make quick friends with each other with their terrible sense of humor and their cheesy, cheesy jokes. They're, he's on helping them unpack. And they're buds. They are I buds. I don't understand why the chubby bully hates this kid. I don't know. The chubby bully, whose name I never know. I just call him the chubby kid. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay, so wait. When these two have their first interaction and they, they clearly get along and they're all <laughs> chubby and cheesy together, there's this chubby kid eating a piece of cake. It's <laughs> not a piece, a it's car. a whole cake. 
He has a whole cake, and he has like a box of ding dongs on the car. And he's just leaning on the car, and he's watching them, and he shakes his head about something about them being Bruce Lee freaks and moving to the neighborhood. But P.S. He's also in a karate class. We find out later, even though he's making fun of them. This is such a weird introduction <laughs> to any character in any movie. He is holding an entire cake with like chocolate smeared like oh, he's, whenever smeared he's eating all over his face. Whenever he's eating, which is in many of the scenes here, he's always got like when he's eating the burgers, he's got ketchup on his face. When he's at the birthday just, party, again, uh, there's cake on his face. Just he's like just sloppy. He's just, uh, uh, you're actually so leaning against a car for yeah. no reason. We, we don't get a sense of geography. These mm-hmm. two don't even like, like look across the street him, yeah. and acknowledge. And we don't know why, but the chubby kid hates RJ. Like he hates RJ. The next even time, later, those guys, those kids, the ones that he's feeding, yeah, they're like, like, "Why do you hate him so much? Why do you hate him?" And he's like, "I have my reasons." <laughs> I guess but that's good enough for them. us, the audience. I'm like, going to say, and I'm just thinking of this now. Sure. Maybe he wanted to be the first one to make friends with the oh. new guy. And RJ rode his sweet bike up and made quick friends. And now Chubby Kid is like, oh, I'll just be mad at RJ now. You with think? all the flashbacks that we get in this movie of scenes that we already saw, wouldn't it be great if out of nowhere <laughs> we just went into his mind and it was just that day where he looked out his window and he was like, a new kid across the street. I'm going to go. Oh, no, RJ. And then he went inside and grabbed all this snack food and went back out. I, guess. I think that that might have been part of the extended cut that we don't get to yeah. see. That makes so, a lot of so what's they make his name? Richard? No, Jason. Jeez, Jason. Man, so they wait, don't forget. So yeah. they get we watch the chubby kid eat in hatred for them. And then Jason shows off his already kind of halfway established workout room in his garage. I mean he's he's made his own dojo in the garage, yeah. basically. And he's yeah. showing he's kind of showing it off to a very interested RJ. And RJ, after he gets hit in the head a couple of times with one of the little, oh what do you call fist like a, like a, punching yeah, like a fist, fist thing, things. A punching, yeah. a punching ball, let's call it. I don't yeah, because it wasn't a full bag. Whatever. Um, all of a sudden, RJ wants to show off what skills he has. And wouldn't you know, he does some break dancing and some rapping for us. And we're like, Who would have thought? what a wonderful team. He can't do karate. He has no interest in it. But an RJ PS... Knows where everything this kid is. Saw Breakin and was like, Boogaloo Shrimp? I kind of yeah. look like that guy. I can do it. I'm going to do this. No, and I he love how he tries to moves. run up or tries to climb like these shelves and it just oh, yeah, crashes. Yeah. He looks so puzzled by this. Yeah. Like, Wait, how did that well, he possibly does. happen? <laughs> he says, Why did that? What's up with that shelf thing, man? And I think Jason's like, I don't know, man. It's an old house. <laughs> yes. It's like, you know, old house. Like, he's responsible like I said, for this. Their conversations. <laughs> Who talks like this to each other? Who does? <laughs> Nobody. What about when he shows up in a shower cap in the one oh, scene? Yeah. No, he doesn't show up. It's because he goes to his house because he runs because he's so sad because his dad ripped up his Bruce Lee posters. So he God, runs. This movie is amazing. <laughs> this Jason kid is obsessed with Bruce Lee. He's got posters of him all over the garage. Mm-hmm. He's got this blocking dummy. Yeah, which is a big trunk of wood with pegs sticking out that I guess you like. I don't understand the purpose of it. Is it you're hitting it to toughen your arms up or something? Well, he does do some of that. I think it's so that they learn how to like, yeah, yeah, at the right spot. I don't don't know know that that's really the answer (laughs) here. And so they know how to yeah, yeah in the right spot. No, not yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Now I understand. (laughs) All right. (laughs) After this, uh, you know, they're best friends. It's great. He's settling in. Now we get to see the only glimpse of the bully's home life. Oh, boy. He's outside sitting on his lawn. He has a power washer, Mm -hmm. and he's just spraying empty Coke cans around. Yep, but pretending that they're RJ. Yeah. Yeah. And his 
crazy out of breath dad walks down. <laughs> his dad like, is so oh, out of breath. What do you do? <laughs> All he did was walk out the door and walk down like five steps. He's He's flabbergasted. Every time I tell you to do something, oh, I catch you (laughs) goofing off. And even as he's walking up the steps, he's like, I can't believe it. I can't believe this. I can't believe you. (laughs) That's it. It's like, again... Like these, these, the, in the script it said, exasperated dad goes outside. And this guy was like, exasperated. That clearly means to lose one's breath. Okay, so here we go. And that's how he delivered his lines. And nobody thought to tell him, easy, easy. Yeah, yeah I think we're good. Uh, yeah, we got it in one take. That's great. Oh, no, no, we don't need you for any more scenes. You're good. That's a You're wrap, good. buddy. You it's can right. go home now. Yeah. No, I think he's in the audience later at the. No, he's not. Um, no, yeah, that, no so, that audience is comprised of the high school students whose gym this is. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in that audience looks between the age of 16 and 23. The dad leaves him to wash the windows of the house literally with a mop. He's washing the windows with like a kitchen mop. He has a power washer, though. Yeah. And he's using a mop to wash Yeah, the house. I don't understand. I don't understand. None of this makes sense. And he even says something like, oh, my daddy treats me like a stepchild. Yeah. All right. You were spraying Coke cans. (laughs) Relax. Yeah, you're kind of ridiculous, buddy. You're ridiculous. But now he sees RJ coming back up the block on his skateboard, and he literally sprays him with a pressure washer hose. Like, and then waits for him. him. Yes, and then jumps on top of him like a weirdo. Yeah. It doesn't try to punch him. It's just on top of him. And RJ gets away, and it's this goofy chase where RJ jumps, and then comes some, some construction workers or something encourage The construction the workers are fully invested in this yeah. chase because they're weird. stopping him, and they're like, no, 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 you can make the jump. Make the jump, man. Come on, yep. make the jump. I'm like, yep. what is happening right now? And I was ready for there to be wet cement or something. but some, No. No. He just falls down. Falls down on the skateboard. Right now he just lays there and he says, next time I get you, ooh, I'm going to really beat you up. I'm going to get you because he's so mad. Again, we don't know why. RJ seems like a pleasant enough dude. He knows where a lot of stuff around town is. He's always ready right. to do the thing tomorrow. Like when they're going to the, when he talks about the grave, he's like, yeah, we'll go there tomorrow. When he yeah. tells him about the abandoned house that he knows about, we'll go there tomorrow. All of it. <laughs> or the karate place, we'll go there tomorrow. He anyway. seems so easy to become friends with. I yeah. just don't know why he doesn't become friends with it. I, And I know he's a bully. I get it. And he's just a weird stereotype like a lot right. of people in this movie. But it's just there's no motivation behind this character just hating RJ so much. I know. We needed something. Like, could they have had, like, again, even that little something. inner mind. Something. Well, what we have next is a beautiful moment between... Yes. Jason and the grave of Bruce Lee. <laughs> he brings flowers. Oh, he brings Bruce flowers. Lee's He's favorite like, kind of flowers. I read all your books. I know these are your favorite. <laughs> if you could just help me out, that would be really great. Yeah. I love living here in Seattle, the place where you were buried. <laughs> it's touching, let's say. And the whole time, his fabulous new best friend is just standing, just standing there. there. Giant smile plastered on this kid's face. Yep. <laughs> Nothing about this is weird. Well, he makes him drive there because he knows where it is. Couldn't give him directions yeah. to it or anything. No, 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 no. I like how he's like, here, drive my mom's car, I guess. Uh, you know where it is. Let's go. We met yeah. three hours ago. Mm-hmm. But I feel, no, yesterday... They met, yeah, they met a day ago. That is when I started to get a sense. I was like, okay, so these kids are old enough to drive. He may ride a bike and a skateboard everywhere, but they're old enough to drive. So they're not sure. kids. They're high school seniors, high school juniors. We never see. I, they never in school. Know, how does he know Kelly? How does he know Kelly? She says, what I met this? him last summer. But how? What? That's what Where? she says when she in introduces LA? him. She says, I met him last summer. Is it like a grease type romance or something where it was just like a summer thing? Because then even the, like, how did he know? Or has that much time passed? When did he find out she wanted a bunny? Why? Don't know. Who brings a bunny as a gift? Wait, we have to get there. We have to get here. I because know those listeners that are listening and don't know this movie or have it, we've got to, we've got to keep on track. We can't jump around too much. All right. <clears throat> or try not to. 
But P.S. listeners, a bunny is given as a gift in this movie. We're not there yet, but we'll get there. The bully is now comically eating oh, yeah. burgers. This is the burger party. It's a party. tray of burgers. Like, like um, Popeye or who was the guy in Popeye? Uh, the, the guy who ate yeah. all the burgers? Pee-wee or something? Not oh, Pee-wee. What's oh, his yeah. name? Oh, yeah. I'll gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. Yeah. Wimpy. Wimpy's yeah. his name. Mm-hmm. But it's like that in that they are just stacked up like a pyramid of burgers. Yeah. This kid... Mm-hmm. And all of his friends are there. And this guy that he's talking to across from him, did you see that majestic rat tail? That this oh, kid yes. <laughs> it was beautiful. I said, it is gorgeous. Yes. He's got like eight white hair ties in a row at the bottom of this. It's thing. fierce. I wanted to see more of him. I'm like, why couldn't he be in the karate class? I don't know. I know. But the bully's obsessed with RJ, and I love this, because he looks out the window, and RJ's standing in the parking lot. What is RJ doing? He just (laughs) looks so confused. He's just in the... RJ is so... They're at this, like, like a McDonald's... Like a burger joint. Yeah, sure. And RJ is in the parking lot, just looking confused, like, looking around for... We don't know what. Wandering around It's as if he's looking for the ghost of Bruce Lee. It's like he's... (laughs) Looking for Jason or something? Like they were supposed to meet there and he doesn't and know. And later yeah. Jason just shows up in the parking yeah. lot too. I'm like, is this where they just hang What's out? What's happening? In is he together? like I don't know. But but so the chubby kid sees him and now confesses to all his little goonies, like, oh, see that guy I hate him. And he's like, Do me a favor, we're just gonna we're not gonna let him get out of the parking lot. We're gonna block him in. And they do. They just all of a sudden appear like again. <laughs> He's out Many there. times in this movie, characters are instantly surrounded They're by just, people yeah. who seem to have just come into existence yes, next to just them. Just like, just like, spontaneously just appeared. Confused, and then in, in a giant, vast parking spot, parking yep. lot, where he could easily see these people walking up fifty yards away, yep, come and, and they're form. just on him. They're just all they surround him. He pushes the bully out of the way and yeah. then runs to sort of the fenced in outer eating part of yeah. this fast food joint where then he's kind of um, he's kind of beat up a little bit, tossed around by this big guy yeah. and his friends. And then, of course, Jason, again, comes out of nowhere, shows up in the parking lot and rushes to help him. What's interesting is, is in this particular case, he's got good fighting skills, Jason, right? He kind of kicks their ass. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, but, I mean, I, this is, I mean, later on, he's losing fights to people that legitimately know karate. True. And we don't true. know anything about just, Rat Tail and the rest of these This kids. is true. This is true. Oh, this is our first, um, when they do take on this gang, this is the first mm-hmm. titular moment because they kind of go back to back and they go, no retreat, no surrender, right? When they appear to be shot in a different, like, they appear to be because it's just a it's it's just a shot reverse shot of the two of them mm-hmm. and the bully, and mm-hmm. when it shows the two of them, they appear to be indoors, <laughs> and there's like a whiteboard behind them. Did you notice this? I didn't. It's like I they're in a conference room, supposed to be outside, <laughs> and then the bully is clearly outside. It is. It's really weird. <laughs> I love it. And you think that this is going to be a huge. Knockdown, drag out fight. But no, the owner of the fast food joint comes out and kicks them all out. They're done. They need to go home. And Jason has to go home to his dad, who is very upset because fighting is wrong. Even though he was a dojo owner and taught karate, it's not meant for aggressiveness. And fighting is just wrong. I think it's meant for self-defense. Yes. And he doesn't think that his son, he thinks that his son is being very aggressive, I guess, and is yeah. starting fights. Right. Well, like he did at the, like he did at the lesson in the first scene when he starts the fight and knocks down the guy yeah. at the studio yeah, or at the yeah. dojo. Mm-hmm. So it's it's rational that his dad would think this, but their their argument and their fights are just comical. Like they're screaming and yelling, but there appears to be nothing written for them to say. So they're just making it up as they go. And it's not convincing. They're such terrible actors. And he's the dad still recovering. So he's limping around with a cane <laughs> while he's shouting at him. And Jason just gets so mad and he runs into his so, bed oh my and then God. he looks at his pictures of Bruce Lee and then he goes in his garage and he he just starts beating up his his punching bag 
like a lunatic. When he goes to his room, because his dad sends him to his room, which I find is adorable, Mm -hmm. and he is looking wildly around the room at these posters and they show the posters and they're all at like 45 degree angles like it looks like a horror movie is about to break out yeah. <laughs> this kid has some rage issues oh yeah because like you said then he goes out and just starts punching everything he can in his garage dojo and next thing we know this is another point in the movie where we're like where are we we're in a different movie <laughs> where are we a, a, a hundred percent different movie that is not at the mgm grand no. as they say no it no it's at the same high school yep it's in a darkened basement <laughs> meant to look more like yeah. right so we see this guy and oh my god the fighter and the guy interviewing him should be ashamed of their performances in this movie. <laughs> the guy interviewing him looks so uncomfortable. He's flubbing his lines. Yep. And he hands him the crappiest looking trophy ever. Well, it's it's like very a, tall, but it's very cheap looking. Very tall, but it looks like a, a bowling trophy. And yeah. over 60 league would give out. This guy is a... I guess he's the greatest karate champion or boxer. Who even knows what this is about? Karate boxing? Was, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's apparently broadcast live on TV in Seattle. Well, though, he's so. and he's from Seattle, and in the his particular dojo is in Seattle, not far. And our friend RJ knows where it is. And that's why this whole thing with Kelly makes no sense because. RJ is like, oh, yeah, yeah, this guy? You don't know this guy? He's the best in town. He's got a dojo, blah, blah, blah. We find out he's Kelly's brother. Like, shouldn't he know this if he's known Kelly for a year? Well, she says it at the party when she's introducing. I knew him from last summer. And then I thought, we don't know time frames. Maybe it was like the summer and now it's fall and she calls last summer. Some, I don't know. I'm not getting into how they know each other. Maybe, but, but again, he does, if he spent any time with her, he should know that her brother is the most successful karate man in Seattle. I agree. This gets a little confusing. It might be a little confusing to explain. So RJ mm-hmm. takes him to this dojo who the guy who just won this big fight owns. And oh my God, the receptionist too. The receptionist at this desk. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, they just shoved a desk in a corner and sat some mm-hmm. woman there. Her pretending to look like she's doing receptionist work in this scene is some amazing <laughs> acting. And well, so when is. He starts, oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, when he's filling out the. So <laughs> he has to fill out like a new, uh, not new patient, but like a, a new student yeah. form. And RJ, again, is just sitting there, and he's just looking around and smiling. He's having so much fun. And looking over his shoulder, like, what are you writing, your name? I think he even makes a joke. Do you know how to write your name? She laughs at that joke. Then, how far do you think he gets into this uh, paperwork? Do you think he may have written his first name? Because immediately, that guy walks around the corner and goes, hey, let me take this from you. Yeah, yeah, come on, let's go. He was writing for 20 seconds, maybe. Mm Mm-hmm. And now he gets whisked away because class is about to start. Class is about to start. I love how he's like, uh, you know, I'll show you around. I'll show you, you know, where the locker room is. He walks over the door and goes, yeah. this is the locker room. <laughs> go inside. Class is about to and He says, class is going to start in 10 minutes, so go get changed. That way you'll have a lot of time. To... I'm like, a lot of time? You said it starts in 10 minutes. <laughs> While he's in there getting changed and RJ's looking for reassurance, he's in this locker room going, you see, didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you I knew where this place was? Didn't I tell you I know the best thing? So while this is happening, we find out that the chubby bully takes classes here. He's a karate man. He too, yes. And he goes up to the the assistant dojo guy or whoever this dude is. And he's like, oh, that guy you just brought in. Yeah, he did this because his head's all bandaged from, I guess, the big fight. Oh, yeah, he's, the... and he's got like a little bruise under his eye and stuff. Yeah. So he claims that they had a fight. It's crazy. And he claims the fight was because he goes, yeah, because the guy's like, well, what did he just come up to you? Like, what beef does he have with you? He's like, well, he started to say that dojos in LA are better than dojos here in Seattle Mm -hmm. and he started that's what he's doing he was talking smack and that is good enough for this assistant sensei to lose his Mm -hmm. mind and be like oh yeah yeah Yeah. let's just beat the shit out of this kid let's just yeah yeah so he gets his like black belt fighter 
right? That kid's got to be the best student because I love how they're fighting. And at one point, the guy's like, "Are you sure I should keep beating this kid up? Yeah. Like this sounds <laughs> like a bad idea." He does. He says, "But go- coach or sensei, I don't <laughs> yeah. know." Yeah. Sensei, are you sure about this? I said fight. Uh-huh. All right, okay. So they bring him out, and they really make an example of him. And then everybody laughs at him after he loses. He gets his butt kicked. And now it is funny because RJ is just on the sidelines, like, making all these, like, terrible faces every time he gets his butt kicked. And then, uh... uh, Would you say terrible faces, or would you say appropriate reaction shots? (laughs) Oh, all right. (laughs) All right, I see where you're going. He is an animated actor, let's say that. Yes. This. And then, meantime, the, the chubby kid is just laughing hysterically. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's getting his butt kicked, but it's, then I think all of a sudden RJ comes in yeah. and is like, hey, let's get out of here. And they just. It leave. is this kind of odd, and I mean, by today's standards, it's racist, but I don't know. I thought it was kind of funny because RJ stops the fight, walks over, and is like, yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. And then he looks at the sensei and he bows and then looks at the black fighter and puts his fist up and goes, later, bro, <laughs> and then runs out. <laughs> He's having a bad day. And who knows when this party is? Is it later that same day? Are we weeks later now? Because it just keeps getting worse for this. Well, this is when, again, when we get to the party, I'm like, where are we now? Where? Who are these people? (laughs) Because we're spending time with these two girls who, over the music, I can't hear a word they're saying. Uh, They're having a conversation. The music at this party is so loud. The one girl's barely wearing a bikini. This thing looks like just electrical tape wrapped around yep. her body. And they're talking about how beautiful the party is and the pool party and they're well, all right. So we're but it looks like a, a party for it looks like a party for a, an eight year old. Like it's like streamers and birthday cake and like, you know, the paper tablecloths. Like this does not look like a party for a seventeen year old girl. And it's a pool party, but she's fully dressed, although like you said, her one friend's wearing like just floss, dental floss. Yes. But she's fully dressed and I I don't mean to be too graphic for our listeners, but she mm-hmm. does have a severe camera. Toe in this movie. <laughs> I did not notice. Wait, through the whole movie or just at the party? For that whole party outfit that she's oh got my on. God, okay. I did not notice that, but that's really funny. Okay. <laughs> How about so we find out in no time that her brother is the guy who owns that dojo, as we sort of well, said the before. brother comes in with his <laughs> giant trophy, and they he's all over her, like in he a gross way. All he's like, over oh, his sister. my sister's birthday party. He gives her his trophy. He says, <laughs> I want you to have this for your birthday. Well, okay, first we see the assistant sensei, the guy who just beat up or, or oh, told yeah. the other guy to beat him up. We see him all over this girl and she's like I'm just not into you and then yeah. we see her with this other guy who turns out to be her brother because at first I was like oh well she's really into this guy and then they refer to each other no. as brother and sister brother, yeah and I was like yeah. this is really creepy and everybody's there including the chubby bully who at one point jumps in the pool and just starts yelling who peed in the pool who peed in the pool <laughs> yes he does he does a cannonball in the pool and then yells Everyone about people laughs peeing. at him it's it's so bizarre. This uh-huh. whole movie doesn't make any sense. Mm-mm. And again, the, our main protagonist is nowhere to be seen for the longest time before he drives oh, up with a box. With a big uh, gift box. Does he come with RJ? Oh, no, he comes alone to the party. RJ, yes. even though it's his bestie, is not at this party. Because really, it's for white people only, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> this, I mean, oh yeah, you look at this party for two seconds, you're like, this is a white people only party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I do like how the brother. I don't the brother... even think the guy who just beat him up at the dojo's there. I don't even think he's invited to this party. No, that's what I mean. It's a <laughs> oh point. my god! Um, the I like when the guy. So the guy who wins the trophy, the dojo owner, when he comes in and he's being introduced to somebody, all of a sudden, or he's chatting with somebody, all of a sudden somebody comes out and it's like, "Hey, you have a phone call," <laughs> and he goes in and he does. He's got. Yeah. He gets on the phone and we get a little scene where he is 
the, this, those same tough guys from New York are calling him and threatening him about his do, about his dojo. Did you see this couch that he's sitting on to take this call? The pattern no. is like chickens. It's just oh, big giant it. red chickens That's all over this couch. And he then he's also dressed like the crocodile hunter at this point too. Yes, he's, he's got like, like a vest. khakis with a button-down beige shirt. Oh yeah. my god, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so he's got to leave. He bumps into uh, Jason to Jason on Jason's way in, and Jason doesn't really take it in because he's got a special gift to deliver. So he, he knocks comes that gift this, to the ground too. He, he runs he into does, Jason. That's that right, box I didn't falls realize. to the ground that's hard. Right. <laughs> so even when he's coming up with this, like it's like a good sized box. I'm like, what is he bringing her? And then I wondered, like, is this just to, for show? Like I'm coming to a birthday party. I bring a gift. No, she opens the gift eagerly. Right. When like within minutes of him arriving, she's so he doesn't even make it him. outside there. The, he doesn't even really get to the backyard before she opens this. But gift. thank goodness, because it's alive. It's a little bunny. <laughs> he bought her a bunny. <laughs> yes. I assume in the long period of time they've known each other, of which we have not seen, she's never Mm-mm. been talked about in this movie. She must no. really like rabbits. He says that, or she says, oh, you remembered that I saw it at the pet store or something like that. Like, again, she mentions all these times they've had together that we as an audience do not ever get to see. So she's thrilled about her bunny <laughs> and she runs off to go, I guess, show it off to her friends. Yeah. And then... uh the people at this party are just mean. The little sensei guy, assistant sensei, whatever his name is mean. Um, I mean, still, you know, they think that he thinks that L.A. karate's better. But it is true. weird how he walks into the backyard and just looks around like, oh, no, all of my enemies uh, yeah. are assembled at one birthday party. Uh-huh. And after he gets beat up, because he gets beat up pretty good, like pretty well, handily. Because they, they both... The, well, first, the jerky, chubby guy is just, like, throwing food at him. Like, just dumps, I think, a drink <laughs> on him, throws food. a cake on him. I wanted He's a like, food fight so <laughs> badly in this movie, and it just didn't happen. It could happen. have happened here. It could have happened here. And he does get beat up. He gets beat up by the assistant sensei guy. Who, by the way, the assistant sensei guy wears this, like, off-the-shoulder, like, weird... Oh, it's so <laughs> billowy like the shoulders are coming out it's got a giant collar that's just flapping in the breeze it's, it's a ridiculous. pretty great shirt it's ridiculous jason gets beat up and he runs back out to his car and he's a real asshole to kelly because for some reason he thinks she had something to do with this i think he thinks that she yeah, I don't but know. Set him up was like you brought me a rabbit. <laughs> no, I'll go send out and you get out beat there. up. It doesn't make any sense. I, I'm sure he's embarrassed, but it's well, I don't and know. he's really trying. Even when he the kid, the chubby kid's first throwing the food on him, he's really trying to live by his father's rule and not start a fight at this party. And then he ends well, he up getting tries, his butt but kicked. He's no match for these guys. Like he's well, no true. match for the for the assistant sensei. He just, he didn't want to be in this fight. And now he is. No, and I, I get it. Part of it right. is because I think the assistant sensei is also like, is like, hey, that's my girl. Right? Don't they have that fight? And he's like, no, he's He not. sees them kissing inside after the whole Oh, because after the exchange. bunny. After she gets yes. the, <laughs> the rabbit exchange. He gets beat up. The, to where his shirt is torn and he has bruises all over him. So he looks ridiculous. He looks ridiculous. His he, dad has no time for this. But in the meantime, this sensei, the dojo owner, the champion, goes to his dojo where two of the toughs that we saw from the beginning, the guy who seems to be in charge. Right. And then one of his body cards, the Al Pacino stunt double. But not Van Damme. But Dom. not, it's like, it's like he was not available for shooting that day because yes. they have mm-hmm. another guy there who doesn't yeah. say anything, but they put him in giant sunglasses and uh-huh. I just didn't know if we were supposed to think it was Van Damme. I, I wasn't sure. You don't understand, like, I was like, well, what happened to him? Is he are they, is he rotating through his staff? Is Van Damme going to show up somewhere else? And then at this point, I wasn't sure if 
I mean, it's clear that this mafia guy is trying to take over all these dojos, but yeah. I thought maybe he had somehow found out that the the father moved here and he was trying he to was get a hold of Jake. Yes, no, yes. No, it's just, you know, he just wants the most successful dojos in, I guess, every West Coast. I guess they took over the entire East Coast and now they're just... Now they're moving out West. Moving out West. Maybe. But this guy will not give it up. And Mm-mm. seems to be tougher than Jason's dad because these guys have to leave. They don't break well, his he's got a trophy. They do nothing. You yeah, th- right. he's just won a trophy where Jason's dad was You're right. really yes. just. They, yeah. they must have seen him on uh, local cable access the night before yeah. winning a trophy. <laughs> yes, right. at the MGM Grant. Um, so, yeah. wait, oh, I, I, oh, go ahead. Don't, I was going to say when Jason drives to uh, Bruce Lee's grave for a second time, this time by himself, oh my to God. gather some strength from did Bruce you, Lee. Did you listen to the line that he gives here? Because I had to listen twice because I went, that grammatically makes no sense. He goes, nope. wait, I have it here. Where is it? Oh, he's like crying almost. And he's yeah. talking to Bruce Lee's grave and he goes, I've got nowhere else to go. Nowhere but you. Nowhere but you. I was like, nowhere but you? What does that even mean? What does that mean? It doesn't make any sense at all. But he uh, doesn't have anywhere else to go. And he doesn't. He doesn't. And when he does go home, his dad is so angry. But you can't take him seriously because he looks like an angry kid. But he's so angry at him. Uh, This is where I'm like, where's the mom? He looks like a floppy-haired friend of this kid. He too is heavy breathing. That man needs to run a comb through his hair or something. Yeah. Like I under you're balding. We get it. Stop with like the front. Like I'm gonna have a bangs and a bowl cut. It's not working. It's not working for your dad. Look at least. <laughs> so this is when I, I'm wondering where's mom, but she's maybe working the night shift. And yeah. the dad goes in and takes apart. This is when he rips the 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 kids. Like Jason's like no. And he starts to take down the equipment. He's like, Dad, Dad, what are you doing? What, what are you doing in my... Because they have a fight. <laughs> but then when the dad goes in the garage, he kind of freaks out and softens a bit. And then the dad rips down one of the posters of Bruce Lee. And that's when Jason loses it. And he goes slow-mo, running through the streets yep. and crying yeah. to his friend RJ in the shower cap. Right. <laughs> RJ sets him up because RJ knows the places. He knows the things. He's and like, he oh, I know up. this awesome abandoned house. And it is a pretty <laughs> awesome abandoned house with lots of candles. Oh, lots my of God. Candles. It is great. He takes all this stuff. He moves all of his stuff from the garage into this abandoned house. Where's Again, where are the parents when they're moving the stuff? I don't know. We don't know. But he does. And it's, it's almost like an awesome montage of him like mm-hmm. decorating this abandoned house mm-hmm. now. He puts candles up. He's setting up his blocking dummy. He takes the poster. It's ripped in half and just, just sticks it back up there. He in fixes, two pieces. He fixes it. He fixes it nice. <laughs> yeah. And now he's he's happy, and, and RJ's happy. RJ's like, I thought you were going to sleep over my house. And he's like, no, I got to go back home tonight, but I am going to spend go a little home. more time here. No, it, no, it's because like he's he a has... Squatter. From this point in the movie on, he just he's a squatter in this house. This is his home now. This is where this Because what happens to him? No, of course. This blew my mind i have to say i didn't see this coming i didn't okay. see this coming i, I, I didn't this was gonna happen and so i was really waiting for it oh. but when it did happen i was like i don't think jamie knows this is what this movie no about. i didn't <laughs> i had i hadn't i hadn't a clue and there was nothing prior i mean then i was like oh well now that makes sense but so so he's all candlelit and set up and shoes his friend RJ away. And now he's snuggly tight with a little book that he's going to read about Bruce Lee. I did think, I'm like, he's going to fall asleep with all them candles lit. He's going to burn down this place that he's, his friend is so nicely. But that is not what happens. No. What happens is there's a bright light that exudes from the room that you're like, what? And the ghost of Bruce Lee shows up. The ghost of Bruce Lee. Sure does. Comes in and does this whole PSA about not using violence (laughs) to get even. (laughs) And then he does, (laughs) right? I like like how it's, it's not just a PSA about it. He comes in, he asks the kid, 
are you just doing this to beat people up? I'm like, Grizzly, why would you show up if you thought that was the case? You know better. <laughs> and this guy, this actor who plays the Bruce Lee, there's moments where I think he's brilliant, and there's moments where I'm like, what did you? What are you saying? What are you trying to there um, is. Okay, first of all, when he comes out, this actor does not look like Bruce Lee very No, much. he but does I love how the kid, like, looks at the poster and then looks yes. at him like, <laughs> you kind of almost vaguely look like him. <laughs> I mean, I did see you walk out of a cloud of smoke and white light. And so, all right, I'm willing to buy that it's you. There is this first scene when they're just talking Mm -hmm. Right before he like dumps coke out or whatever, and Bruce when he Lee's does doing, the analogy oh about God. filling his cup, oh. it's crazy. And emptying but his cup. There's a scene after he de after this Bruce Lee delivers his dialogue. Mm -hmm. The kid Jason starts talking to him, and Bruce Lee just very quickly blinking and miss it, side eyes over like at the director, like are <laughs> you really fucking doing this? And then he looks back straight. It's so great. I urge everyone to go and find that scene and watch it. It is such an obvious, like, oh, my God. I can't What's believe happening? this yeah. movie. It's amazing. <laughs> so the ghost of Bruce Lee isn't just here to give him a little motivational speech about what to do. No. He is here to train him. Bruce Lee's kind of an asshole. He really what is that workout that he has to do where his, where his leg is tied up in the air or something? Like, well, that looks I don't intense, know. But I, I guess that's to know. practice that crazy kick. I don't know. No, it is. It's, you know, it's a thing to pay off. It's a it's a dirty dancing lifter up in the air thing. Well, you know. I don't know. We saw Bloodsport and there was some intense training. Did he ever have to tie his leg up like that? Well, he did do that thing where he had to stretch his body all weird and it hurt. Uh, and he had to be suffer through it. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Remember? <laughs> yes, yes. His <laughs> arms and legs. <laughs> yes. I am so happy that Jean-Claude Van Damme got to do a split in this. How he was just hanging on oh. those ropes. That was amazing. I think that's like his signature move. I think oh, that no. if he's in a movie, he's like, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to sit in the splits. For, <laughs> that is like... his <laughs> signature move, definitely. And I like it. It is funny because Bruce Lee, like, he just just spills garbled nonsense. Like, it is just every cliched word of advice that perhaps Bruce Lee said. I feel like most of I think of some of it are Bruce Lee-isms. Some of them are, I think. It sounds to me like they took Bruce Lee-isms and were like, well, we could just tweak this a little bit. And had a little liberty. The they had a little liberty. Yeah, because yeah. none of it sounds great. Mm -hmm. But... There's well, because a lot of it's of it. delivery. Yeah, he slaps the kid around a lot. He beats him up with his own blocking dummy, which I kind yeah. of thought was fun. And he's really putting him through the ringer. I like how he says, like, I'll be back tomorrow. In the meantime, you better get out there and start training. Yeah. And we get the first of 45 training montages. Yep. And all of them similar workouts. There's one exercise machine he does that he's... Again, with the pulling of the something. With the springs. Yes, yes, with the springs. There's the sit-ups that he does in between two benches. There's what the, he, What's the thing where he's hanging upside down and he's doing sit-ups, but he keeps just hitting his back against a board that's... I don't know. I'm not sure either. He finds just, like, a climbing rope, like, with knots. Just oh, yeah, in the yeah. wild. He just... Yeah. I, I've never been to a playground where they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, there's one of those ropes from gym class just here. He finds it, and probably RJ knew where it was. Um, and, oh, RJ helps him train, too. RJ rides his bike while Jason has to keep up and run alongside him. Oh, in the meantime, this is when yeah. we see that Jason's dad did find work. He works as a bartender, again, still using the cane because that leg ain't quite healed yet. <laughs> and some terrible brother of or relative, like you said, O'Doyle rules of, of the chubby guy is just being a jerk. He's like, bring me my beer, pours the beer on his head when he hobbles it over to him. He never makes a karate move. Honestly. Jason's dad needs to grow a spine or something like 
You can't yell at a bartender to bring your drink over to the pool and table. Then pour That's it not on the his bartender's head. job. Right. He pours it on his head. He tells mm-hmm. him to clean himself up. He does. He basically apologizes for, I guess, this guy pouring a beer on his head. Yeah. He does finally grab him and forces and him kicks outside. Him out. Right. But even that guy's like, I'm going to come back and next time I'm going to kill you. There's a lot of people yelling they're going to kill people in this movie. They're going to, yeah, they just want death. Seattle's a rough place. It is. The mean streets of suburban Seattle. <laughs> and and you earlier said that RJ helps his buddy train. I'm not sure he helps him. When he's doing reverse sit-ups, he sits on his crotch, they fall down together, and then sort of have a tickle fight? Yeah, their relationship evolves. <laughs> he Jason goes home, and his mom is, I think, carrying groceries, and is like, hey, I'll get dinner ready. You go pick up Dad. And this is now Jason has been trained by um, Bruce Lee by Bruce Lee Mm -hmm. for at least 45 minutes that we've gotten to see. And um, (laughs) he uh, he goes to pick up the dad. And again, it becomes one of those schoolyard or or, or parking lot like surrounds that happen where Jason's dad goes out to the parking lot. And then there's a whole crew of people. It's Ready like the director did not know how to get people in fights. And his solution every no. time was, I don't know, they're in a parking Take lot. Take it in the parking confused. lot. Yeah, exactly. Just like looking around like, where's the person that I'm supposed to meet or pick me up? And I, I know it's like four against one because all these schlubby, out of shape guys get out of cars and surround this yep. guy who taught karate. Yep, and but has no self defense skills. Take him out, oh yeah, so easily. When his son shows up, pulls up, and sees it happening, yeah. makes a quick parking, like d- nose dives into his parking spot, and then uh, m- quickly kicks some ass. I mean, the skills are. He's doing those high kicks. Yeah, he's he takes it down. Now the dad is proud. Oh, the dad you know, is not angry. I mean, the dad is proud, but also, again, grow a spine because the dad's like, you know what? You've been right the whole time. I've been all yeah. the father. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All He's right. Like, I right. mean, you did not need to go this far. You don't need to apologize to everyone you encounter for no reason whatsoever. Oh, like, but you do. You can still be a proud father and be like, you know what, kid? That was pretty great. Maybe I could train you a little bit. But right. no, the, the student has, you know, surpassed the master, let's say, by this point. Mm-hmm. Now, where are we? There's a dance are, party. <laughs> where are we? The, I was almost prepared at this point in the movie to mm-hmm. have a scene cut so drastically that it gives me whiplash. And I still, <laughs> for a second, went, This cannot be right. <laughs> this cannot no, still be because what, this movie. Where are we? Where are we now? I, I thought, Is this another party that we didn't remember that we had to go to? What is happening? Because there's these two people. I don't know. I in. thought, I thought like Saturday Night Fever had started or something, just with the disco and the mm-hmm. lights and the mm-hmm. wow. And we saw RJ break dancing. An hour plus ago in this movie. Right, like, I right. totally forgot this was a thing he could do. And we don't see our characters for a long time. No, no. We see these other two uh, dancers doing like a Michael Jackson kind of a they're dance a, they're routine. A thriller get up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But it's a whole routine. Like you say, he, he the one guy goes into fake cardiac arrest. He's on the ground convulsing. She mm-hmm. puts a light bulb in his mouth. She's like listening to his heartbeat. He convulses yep. again. The light bulb keeps lighting up. It's amazing and so perplexing. Kelly is there and they get to slow dance together at the end of this. Mm-hmm. Isn't this where they um, they dance to a very, very terrible song? RJ, it's some kind of dance competition that they're at, right? No, they're, no, 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 no. It's just a dance? Because I was ready for that. I was shocked when there was no competition because RJ shows up in another Michael Jackson outfit. Yeah. And he's watching them going, they're pretty good. And after yeah. they dance, he comes out and dances. At the end of his dance, he goes, come on, everybody. Let's all dance. <laughs> it wasn't a competition. This is just what he does for fun. Just a little dance. They went to the club, the dance club. That's what they did. And they're dancing. And now we know that Jason's luck is changing. He's been trained. 
He can kick ass now. He's helping his yeah. dad. His relationship with his dad is back. Him and Kelly are together. Yes. And now all of a sudden we're at a full contact karate <laughs> competition. What's full contact karate? What does that mean? Isn't all karate full contact karate or no? I don't know. I don't know because there's just posters. Immediately there's posters. Yeah. This is also intercut with the mob guys all hanging out, traveling places. And coming and in. Yep. Uh-huh. The, uh-huh. the mob guy. Now, I think it's important to understand the mob wants these places for a front yeah. for their mob businesses. And the one sure. guy goes, this is going to be great. The radio stations are going to be there. The TV stations are going to be there. I'm like, why would you do this? <laughs> Maybe they just want to make money off this fight. I don't think they're using it as a front. They're using it as a way to make the money, maybe. Like, I they know don't. that I don't. No. Like, you know, I'm like, you, you, like sure. you do a dog fight or like you do a cuck fight. You know, you, you have these dojo fights, but he knows he's got the Russian. They don't explain this well at all. But, but Jamie, he knows those he's things got... you just mentioned are illegal activities. <laughs> a dojo is not one. I, I don't understand. I don't understand what these mob right. guys well, goal yeah, is. Right. But they're 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 taking over this competition. It's supposed to be for Seattle's finest, sure. right? And I don't know what this is. But I mean, it's a whole lot of exposition dumped by the mob cuz the mob's like, "Hey, we're going to have this mm-hmm. fight. It's awesome. He agreed to it. If we win, we get his dojo. If they win, mm-hmm. question mark. Just just a big question mark because at the end of this, near the end, the mob guy comes on and he's like, it's for everything. You win, you get it all. And I'm like, wait, did this guy just win all the dojos that they had scooped up across the country? I don't know. They're apparently fighting in a local high school gymnasium, which is crazy. The fact that they make it seem like such a big deal. Mm-hmm. They have the most elegant folding chairs out for these people to sit in. There's mm-hmm. no TV cameras. There's no, like, announcers. Mm -hmm. It is a high school gym, and high school students were asked to be extras in this movie. There's nothing classy about this. They're also karateing, which I believe is the correct term. That's it. That's it. In a boxing ring, right? You don't need ropes I I don't know. Well, for the full contact, maybe, maybe. because he does do a, he does use the rope a lot, not just for his fancy splits, but he right. they hang the people on the rope, they push him against it. I think he's like. Well, at yeah. one point, JCVD uses part of the ring as a weapon, which I thought was great. <laughs> yeah, his faces again when he gets into it. Oh, those faces he makes when he's fighting. Even his eyes. Even if you don't throw powder him, he still can do crazy eyes I just like, for the fuck oh. of it. At one point, Jason goes, that's right, you Russian, as though it's a slur. And (laughs) JCVD's reaction to this is like, how dare you call me a Russian? And like, it's your (laughs) name. Like, it's in your title. But he's so angry about it. And you're right. His reaciones make this movie. Oh, they're they're so adorable. (laughs) So adorable. Um, So so before he comes out, though, before Mm -hmm. the big reveal of Jean-Claude, there's they say that they're going to have the three guys. So it's three of Seattle's best, that championship fighter, Dojo guy, the the black belt guy, and there's somebody else. It's like having the, the assistant Al Pacino dojo guy. guy. Oh, that's what it was. That's right. These are all meant to like get in the ring and fight these three, the New York team. The mob we'll guys. Say. Yes. Yes. And then, like you said, all of a sudden they decide, no, it's just, you know what? Never mind. I, we just have this one guy. Uh, Ivan Krushinsky, he can come here and just crush all of you. And he, and another flashback happens because um, Jason's in the audience and he has a flashback yeah. to when he met Ivan, when he met Ivan mm-hmm. rather. And I love it when when he's walked in, when John Clava and Dams walked in, he's got these this team of these oh. this white shirted entourage that look bored to death and sweaty. <laughs> As all get up. You mean his hype men? His hype men who like saunter in 
lazily clapping. Yes, with like literally like white t-shirts on, and he's yeah. he's pumped. He's this Russian. white t-shirts and jeans. It yes, is such a weird group of men to be like. Oh yeah, you guys want to be in this movie? All right, put on this white t-shirt. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. Your jeans are fine. Don't worry about it. It's okay. Just put on a white t-shirt so you guys all match and uh, surround this guy who's doing work. All the work in this movie. Jean-Claude Van Damme is doing everything. He does shout. So he he kill, he knocks down the first guy. He knocks after he knocks out the second guy, which I think was the the assistant dojo guy. Dean, I think is his name. I don't know why I have that written down, but I do. Jean-Claude, after kicking the second guy's ass, shouts, I am the best! <laughs> It's great because I don't know if he's trying to do a Russian accent. He's not no. saying a whole lot in this movie. He doesn't sound Russian. He kind of has mm-hmm. his usual, I'm going to call it French accent. I don't know okay. what his accent mm-hmm. is. I think he's from Brussels. So let's say close enough. Finnish? Sure, mm. Finnish. That's <laughs> he has one of those Finnish accents. But yeah, but his his reaction to everything, his fighting skill, the fact that between rounds he's just hanging out in a split on those ropes. It's just like yeah. everything he does is fantastic. And the fact that he was not in this movie is this movie's only crime, I'm going to say. Yeah, I would. I, the the I one would thing agree. that I'm not too crazy about is and again, I know he's he's in all of this part of the movie. I felt like this went on way too long. And most oh, well, most of it is just the beginning where it's like, oh, guys, are you guys ready to fight? This is going to be great. It's three of us against three of them. This goes on forever. And then in the middle of it, Jason wanders in. And then there's the change in the lineup. And I was like, why is this taking so long to fight? Well, and now I'm looking at the time and I'm like, we have got like 10 minutes left to this movie. What is going to happen? And... It's pretty the, crazy. They, so when he fights the final guy, the trophy winner, yeah. he's going to kill him. That's his goal. <laughs> like, he's like, well, that's he what the even mob says, guy's like, yelling. Oh, he's like, kill him. Yeah. Kill him. And Von dom has got crazy eyes. He'll kill him. <laughs> it, he'll do it. His eyes go crazy. And then Jason gets in the ring. Well, Jason and is ready. Jason right? only gets in the ring because, oh, my God. Did you see the? Did you see the mop of hair on the ref? In this thing where it looks yes, like a that fake wig on this yes. guy. Yeah. That blonde. Yes. It's yeah. just mm-hmm. flopping all over the it looks so strange. So JCVD kicks the ref. Then Kelly is afraid that he's gonna murder her boyfriend. I mean her brother. Brother. That's what right. I meant to say. Yeah, um right. so she's gonna hit him with a stool and he starts like choking her or something. Uh-huh. And that's what spurs Jason to jump in the ring in his right. red ensemble. Yeah. How about how he and RJ are matching? They're both wearing red. RJ's wearing a red shirt with a Playboy bunny on it. He's sassy like that. Well, I um John Claude rips his shirt, his white shirt off of him once Jason oh, yeah. gets in the ring. <laughs> he gets right? so He's furious. got a white shirt that he just like, yeah. yeah. I think that's after he calls him a Russian and he's so upset by that, yeah. he rips his mm-hmm. shirt off <laughs> and just <laughs> rages out. <laughs> we get so many flashbacks at the end of this movie. It is maddening because all of the training montages, we see them again. Bruce Lee, oh, we yeah. see him talking Bruce to Lee's him again back. in an abandoned yeah. house. Like We see all of this throughout the fight. Mm-hmm. So Jean Cla- there's lots of flashbacks, like you said, and we're feeling like the fight is in Jason. But Jean-Claude is strong and he is Russian. And he almost takes Jason. He's got him flipped over on the ropes. And it looks like Jason might go down. And then in his matching red outfit, RJ stands up and says, no retreat, no surrender. Mm-hmm. And that is all he needed. That's all, that he is needs. all he needed. That's all he needs. To jump back in the game. And he does a slow-mo flip kick. Yes. And the crowd goes wild. Yeah. He knocks him right out of the ring. He kicks him. Out of the ring, and and from the first guy, we see that if you're out of the ring, then you've lost. And it's a whole thing. The crowd yeah. rushes in. They pick him up. Oh, yeah. Another, in, in a slew of terrible songs, starts. And it's the end of the movie. And there you have it. No retreat. No surrender. How did you feel about this movie? 
I liked it. I liked it a lot. This is this is I did too. Pure dumb fun, but yeah. it's it's sincere. Like it is such a sincere movie. It's like something that wants to be something real and important and fun mm-hmm. and it just it gets it all wrong because everybody's so terrible at what they're doing yeah. but it's such a fun watch because because everybody's trying and failing it's so great yeah it is yeah. it's i agree it makes me love jean claude and it makes me love just like i love 80s horror movies i think i love 80s karate movies i listen i i, think. I, I can't believe this i like I'm, I'm just so amazed when we watch these movies that I certainly would never have thought of ever telling you to watch. And if I told you to watch this, you never would. No, but I'm so glad that I did. Life changer. Game changer. Glad to have seen it. Would seriously recommend that people watch it just for the fun of it. My recommendation is a movie from 1945. Oh, and boy. Is it a karate movie from 1945? It is not, but I took, no. I took the... No, I, t- I took the idea of <laughs> being visited by a spirit. Oh, good one. And the movie is called Blythe Spirit. And it's about a guy... Mm, like who, Blythe Danner? Yes. It's about a guy Sorry. Who's visited <laughs> by the ghost of Blythe Danner. <laughs> no, it's, it's a guy who is... <laughs> <laughs> visited by the ghost of his dead wife, his like oh. dead ex-wife, and he's married to a second wife. And mm-hmm. the ghost, like you find out later, the ghost's whole plan, like kind of the reason why she's here is she wants to kill him so that they can live mm-hmm. together in the afterlife. And it's a comedy. So whatever, watch it. It's pretty funny. Sounds kind of fun. It is fun, yes. So that is my recommendation. I love it. Oh, Much better. Man, See? this took it. I am still sweating. I just, I'm sweating through this from this. Well, this is why, well, this is the excitement. Oh. This is, this movies like this are why we do this podcast. I feel I like. think it is. Yes. Yeah. I just hope our next one is as exciting as this. So, Jamie, this is why I'm going to ask you to pick our next episode. So, as people may have remembered, if you listened to last Uh, episode we have a list of horror movies that we have not seen Mm -hmm. the list is now one through 31 Mm -hmm. i have the list you pick a number and that is going to be our next movie and don't forget on october 1st our bonus horror movie comes out that is when that episode will be released to patrons of the show so go to patreon.com slash good times great movies but what is going to be our first october movie jamie one through 31. Tell me when to stop. Tell me when to stop. Uh, are you on a you Ouija have... board? Stop. <laughs> 30. Deadly blessing. <laughs> oh. It's a very young Sharon Stone. I don't know oh. if it's her first starring role. Okay. This looks like it could be interesting. Okay. Uh, Ernest Borgnine looks like he's Amish in this movie, so that should be okay. fun. All right, so we will be talking about Deadly Blessing in two weeks, which starts our October of Horror Movies, in which you will get two if you're a non-patron and three if you're a patron of the show. Yay, patron us. Yay, and you will get scary movies. Anyway, (laughs) everybody, watch Deadly Blessing find it i make sure to choose movies now that we can find so i don't have to skype movies into jamie it's always fun but we will watch we will talk about deadly blessing in Mm -hmm. two weeks so until then watch the movie follow us on all the facebooks and the twitters and all that like we said we have a patreon page and make sure to give us five stars on uh, apple podcasts or wherever you get this show everybody we will talk to you again in two weeks have a great two weeks until then Okay. Okay. (laughs) Karate. Goodbye. Nobody told you that you'd face the truth alone. But you got the power to begin. Let yourself wander. Let your spirit find the way. Reach for the power. Reason to
I'm very proud of you, son. I've been such a fool. I... Let's go home. I was making dinner. She's waiting. Was there a director? Because where was he telling that RJ kid to look all the time? What the oh, hell was that kid looking at? That kid, that kid went to the acting school of eye rolling <laughs> and just smiling and having a great time all the time. All right. <laughs> that kid's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, I I don't know if we're allowed to do movies this bad. Like, I don't know.